Hey everybody, this is a Shadowbox, and um, welcome to episode 6 of our Air Hauler Let's Play. You guys have spoken, and uh, we've gone ahead and gotten a new plane. This is the ERJ-145 in United Express livery. Um, <laughs> you might also notice we're no longer at Portsmouth. Um, <laughs> the funny thing is, this is like my 8th time trying to make this video. Um, seven times have failed due to technical difficulties, but the very first time, I tried to take off from Portsmouth with, like, 17,000 pounds of cargo, which is more than I ever tested, and I ended up flying through the trees. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a good thing I made a backup of the company save file, otherwise we would be in the toilet back to, like, the Cessna 172, and I'm sure you guys don't want to see that again. So, uh, here we are. We are at uh, Louisville International Airport um, in the state of Kentucky. It's about 150 miles west of Portsmouth. Um, let me double check. Yep, Louisville International Airport. ICAL code KSDF. Um, and today we are flying with 10,000 pounds of designer clothes worth about $130,000. We are flying uh, north kind of northwest, mostly north, to uh, the western edge of Wisconsin. Um, I forget the name of the specific area, but um, we're here at the cargo ramp, so uh, our cargo is loaded. We are all ready for flight, except for the fact our plane is not on, so let's go ahead and start everything. Oh, unit, okay. Now it's come to my attention that uh, the checklists are only supposed to be used to uh, actually check everything after you've done it, so uh, we'll try to go through our flows and uh, see if we get everything right. Oh snap, um, I forgot to actually make a flight plan instead of just following a GPS straight line, so uh, my uh, recording software will not pick up that screen, so uh, I'll have to bring you back when uh, when we're done with that. See you guys in just a second. All right, guys. All right, guys. Uh, we're back. Sorry about that. Um, all right, now let's go ahead and load in our FS flight plan. All right. I don't know what our departure is going to be from, uh, so we'll leave that blank for now. Or actually, we can go ahead and request clearance, I suppose. I got it. Excellent. Hmm. Well, let's finish setting up this performance initialization. Enter in our fuel. We have about 9,800 pounds of cargo. Zero passengers. Initialize. Okay. Uh, speeds need to be calculated. Trims need to be set. Trim. Okay.
So I think that's everything for our cold and dark checklist. So let's go ahead and check it. Cold and dark checklist. APU. I never started the APU. Oh my gosh, I missed the very first thing. Oh, such a fail. We've been just running on battery power this whole time. Oh, I'm sorry, poor batteries. On. Emergency lights. Armed. Avionics. Master. Two. On. FMS. Initialized. Speeds. Checked. Trims. Set. Takeoff data. Enter. End of checklist. All right. Ready to start checklist. Uh, that will come after pushback. Um, but that's going to include... We don't have any passengers, but he's going to ask for that anyway. Red beacon on. Um, taxi checklist will include hydraulic pumps to auto. Flaps to nine. Um, two pumps on. APU bleed on. Well, we don't need that on yet. And... Let's ask for taxi IFR. Oh, I've never seen that before. VFR takeoff's not permitted. I would suck to be a marshaller in this weather. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. Check completed. Bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start that wheel. Alright, let's go through the ready to start checklist. Make sure we got everything. Oh, whoops. It's already up. It's behind. Right. Ready to start checklist. Fasten belts, no smoke. On. Red beacon. Fuel pump power. Two. On. Pneumatic panel. Checked. Emergency parking brake. Ah oh, man, he's gonna demand that that be set. Ah, uh, forget it. That was the last thing for ready to start. So, let's go and do that. Engine two. They gave us 17 right, right? I think so. Yep. Alright. Yeah, yeah. That beeping means to start the other engine. Should probably have these on as well, because of uh, low visibility.
Um. Oh, I thought he had missed the line. Though it started me off the line, which is weird. There's the engines up. We can... Is that stabilized? It is. Go ahead and engage all of these. We'll disengage the APU bleed. And actually, let's uh, disengage the APU as well. Now I'm just guessing that we have to turn off the APU, um, because I know the APU is just like a third jet engine to uh, power the aircraft while the engines, like while the two main thrust engines are not running, but uh, it never specifies in the checklists when to turn off the APU, and uh, it does specify to turn on the APU during the uh, uh, before descent, or no, during the approach checklist. So, uh, if you know when is the proper time to turn off the APU, I would love to hear it in the comment section. Set parking brakes. Taxi checklist. Hydraulic electrical pump. Auto. ECAS. Blank ice protection. Auto. Flaps. Nine. Thrust rating. Takeoff. One. End of checklist. Also, uh... I'm going to add to that, flight director, yaw dampener, uh, set the autopilot so it's all ready to be engaged. No truck disconnected. Bypass being removed. Look at that, they lined us up very nicely. Perfect. I accidentally unplugged my joystick. Thank you. Okay, let's go forward. I'm unfamiliar with the airport, so I will use progressive taxi. Make sure control of the auto or make sure the autopilot is handled by our FMS eventually. Um, I prefer. Now let's do the full, and give me ground speed. Man, we are barely moving. You know what it is? This gust lock. I know why it's there. I know why it's important, but I'm just too impatient for it. That gust lock actually uh, locks the ailerons in place, so uh, in case like a gust of wind comes from the side, the aircraft like doesn't get flipped or doesn't damage the wings. Um, the reason it's on the throttle quadrant is so you don't accidentally take off with it engaged. But um, failures are not simulated in this aircraft. Well, air hauler simulates them. But uh, it won't simulate wind damage to the ailerons, so we're fine to go ahead and disengage that and give ourselves a little bit of thrust to get moving. Now, Louisville International Airport. The runway is definitely big enough for us here. However, the runway at our destination is only 4,000 feet, and uh, I really wouldn't like to operate this aircraft with a runway under 5,000 feet. So, uh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> and, uh, I no longer have the Cessna Cargo Master. Uh, that has been, um, returned to the person that we, or to, I guess, to the company that we leased it from for, uh, the sum of 88,000. Our current cash is at about 14000 now, but uh, after this haul, uh, this, this cargo flight will uh, bring us in an additional 
uh, 130,000, I believe is what it is. So definitely a good investment. Good choice, guys. Really good choice. Before takeoff checklist, exterior lights on, transponder, one TARA, flight controls, checked, radar, standby. Takeoff configuration. Checked, end of checklist. Takeoff, okay. Obviously we don't need to do the uh, flight attendant safety because uh, not only do we not have any passengers, we don't have any flight attendants in a cargo plane. Um, Obviously, we don't need to go through the uh, engine ready to start or engine startup checklist because, well, I mean, we can. Ready to start. Oh, I was going to ask for the parking brake again. Nope. On. Red beacon. Fuel pump power. Engine start checklist. Engine one. On. Engine two. On. End of checklist. There. <laughs> Louisville, Louisville Stanford International Airport. It's big as in, uh, you know, as an area, but the terminal itself seems rather small to me. Though, um, truth be told, the only real life experience with international airports I have is like Miami International. Uh, D Detroit Metro International, Los Angeles International, and Honolulu International. So, you know, obviously all big major airports, so, uh... Oh! Actually, and Grand Rapids. I didn't realize that, uh... Well, I guess it just now hit me that, uh, Gerald R. Ford Grand Rapids International is an international airport. Duh. That's, that's uh, much smaller than this airport, so... All right. You guys, uh, I'm going to apologize now. Um, I am going to have to cut the video almost right after takeoff. Uh, and I'm actually going to have to film this in two parts because um, my hard drive is just getting really full and uh, I'm gonna have to go through and uh, clean it out um, you know raw raw data takes a lot of hard drive space we're talking like each video that I make is easily a hundred gigabytes in raw data so Alright, here we go. Let's try to get lined up better. Better. -er -er. That's probably good. Hold the brakes. Thrust. Thrust checked. Release the brakes. Let's engage the radar. Speed alive. Eighty knots. Pull up. Positive rate. Gear up. Oh, winds are blowing me around already. Gear up. Flaps up. Altitude heading. 
and nope. I can't use my autopilot quick disconnect apparently. That's just y'all dampener. <laughs> After takeoff, checklist, landing gear, up, flaps, up, thrust rating. Oops, forgot to do that. Climb, overhead panel, checked, altimeters, set, end of checklist. Okay, turn left, heading one, two, five, resume on navigation, climb and maintain one, three thousand. That's already set, excellent. All right, um... Well, they told us to resume on navigation, so that means uh, once we turn here, I'm going to... Uh, now they took that away. Thanks. Uh, they're just putting us on the intercept course for our flight plan, though, so I'll go ahead and engage navigation hold. And uh, as soon as we... As soon as we cross here, we'll... Uh, be able to see... Whoops, that's too far. We can see basically our whole flight plan from there. So if ground speed, give me time to go. Estimated time, whatever you want to say. Here it says TTG, which I assume means time to go. And down here it says ET, which is, you know, estimated time. So whatever you want to call it. I forgot to turn on my landing lights. Oh dear. <laughs> FAA is all over me now. I will not do that. No thank you. I'm actually going to go left. Though, he, he did say resume own navigation, so... We're just going to resume our own navigation before making the turn to 120. Everything is going smoothly. My recording software isn't dying on me yet, so uh, I guess I'll stay until we get to our cruising altitude of uh, flight level 200. Thanks again, guys, as a, you know, for liking and commenting and subscribing. You know, supporting the channel really means a lot to me. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just astounded with how quickly my channel has grown lately. You know, I... Like, I don't know, a week, a week and a half ago, I was at, like, 30 subscribers, and now I'm over 60. So, uh, I can't thank you guys enough for that. Um, and congratulations to, uh, Infinite Lives on your channel growth. Uh, last time I was over at your channel, I noticed you had, uh, you know, you're, you're nearing that 100 sub mark, buddy. That's, that's great. You know, I, I think you're at, like, 95 or so. Man, can't tell you how happy I am for you, man. And, uh, but, you know, another, you know, a dear friend, a, you know, in the in the YouTube community of uh, both Infinite Lives and myself, uh, by the name of Dr. Vesuvius, you know, he he's uh, making some real nice videos over there at his channel. Uh, he has a Let's Fly Let's Play going on. Um, he's also 
doing uh, a little bit of Minecraft here and there, and he's just started a relatively new series on the uh, Minecraft in Space game Star Made. So make sure you go check out his channel, guys, because uh, you can just tell he puts a lot of effort into his videos, and he really likes what he's doing, but, um, and he's been doing it for a while, too, longer than I have, I think, yeah. Yeah, for sure. He has videos that go pretty far back. So, um, definitely give his channel, you know, check out his channel because I would really like his channel to see the growth that my channel and Infinite's channel has grown, or has shown. So, uh, yeah, please check out his channel. Um, and also, uh, you might notice the, uh, new artwork on my channel, um, specifically the new banner, um, well, that's assuming that it's live at this time, if not, if it's not up, then, uh, you know, obviously you wouldn't have noticed it yet, but, uh, that is done by Official McGeek, who, uh, he has a really neat let's play of, um, I can't, the, the actual name of the game is escaping me, but, uh, you run a virtual airline and you compete against other virtual airlines. Um, but it's pretty interesting. I've never seen another game like that. So uh, his channel will also be in the description. Thanks again for the artwork, my friend. Um, but yeah, air hauler. Finally in a jet and my favorite jet to fly, as a matter of fact. You know, there's no, um... Ah, there's our assigned flight level. You know, there's no... Whoops! That's outside the plane. Oh, I just fell to my death. Um... There's no, uh... Talk. Talk, hey, Shadowbox. Um... There's no cargo in the virtual cabin, but it's still a virtual cabin. You know, can't really complain with that. So... Go ahead and dial in flight level 200 and engage FLC. It's about 8.35 local time. It's a nice sunset. Oh, that means we're going to be landing well into the night. But, uh, I don't really mind. I'll just, uh, make sure that my ENB mod is turned off at night so you guys can actually see. I'm sure you would appreciate that. Oh, and, uh, there go my frame rates. So, uh, I have got to cut this video here. Well, not the video. Um, I'll see you guys when we're on approach. For the airport. Yep, sorry, but uh, my hard drive is yelling at me. <laughs> Alright, everybody, uh, they've just given us our uh, vectors here for approach. So, uh, admittedly, they just gave us a heading to fly, but uh, we will fly it, and I guess technically we're on approach. Oh, what's 270? Duh, not 070. There we go. Oh man, this has been a long flight. Um, yeah. Turn off the ENB, get better frames. Yes, frame rates improved by almost 10. Okay. Um. Yep, so technically we're on approach, so I told you I'd bring you guys back for approach, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, it looks like the weather has cleared up for us. Not solid cloud cover. Um, not perfectly clear though, but uh, that's alright. Um, it almost looks like fair weather, like the... Uh, or cold fronts, maybe. No, cold fronts has bigger clouds. These are small and poofy, not big and awesome. Oh, 
let's get outside the cockpit. I just can't get over how good this plane looks. I'm really glad that uh, the United Express livery was chosen. It's one of my favorites. I think my all-time favorite is uh, the U.S. Airways Express livery, but United is right up there with it. But man, it just looks so good. I mean, the, uh, the Coronado aircraft did too, don't get me wrong, but uh, it just doesn't hold a candle to this, I don't think. Right. Uh, before descent checklist, speeds need to be set. I think that's it for... Before descent checklist. FMS, RMU, speed, set. Set. End of checklist. Yep. Okay. How many miles away did they say we were? Come on. Cooperate. 93 miles. So we got quite a bit to go still. Um, I'm actually just going to go direct. Now we're 78 miles away, apparently. So down here, what I've done, I've just overwritten our flight plan and gone direct to uh, the airport, and that's what this is now displaying. I'm still following ATC guidance, um, but this will give me an idea as to the direction of the airport, not the direction of the next waypoints that we missed. Let's actually increase our visual range here. Can I? Come on. Oh, I'm in the wrong menu. Duh. Okay. There it is right there. Looks like it won't be in pitch black while we land. We're close. Um, we, uh, either we crossed a time zone or the time somehow got messed up. <laughs> But uh, I assure you, this flight from Kentucky to Wisconsin has taken, from, for that matter, extreme northern Wisconsin, uh, has taken more than a half hour. Uh, it's a shame that uh, I take such a frame rate hit from a, from my ENB mod. Um, I did change my ENB, though, from that like really dark one I had before to a much more realistic one. Here, uh, I'll show you. I'll just, since we're not doing anything critical, I guess I can show it to you. So you can see it's just, it's much more subtle. And, uh, it looks really, really good. But right now, I was getting 25 frames. I've now, I'm now getting 12. And, uh, it doesn't really affect my frames when I'm recording. Or, sorry, when I'm not recording. But, uh, when I'm recording, it really does. But, I mean... Look how nice that looks. That looks almost real. Um, I'm gonna have to see, like, compared to this. This compared to this. I mean, come on. It's just not even close, right? Yeah, now I'm getting 30 frames. But, um, I'm gonna have to see if there's settings that I can tweak, like maybe lower terrain density or something in order to run that EMB mod, because man, it just looks so good. Turning on the landing lights as we approach 10,000 feet. Oh. Potentially landing in 13 minutes. Still 78 miles away. Wait, no, that can't be right. Here we go, 63 miles away. Ah. 
this is our distance from when we did the direct two. So, uh, in fact, let's do that again. Reset the line. Yeah guys, so uh, I'm considering bringing some new series to the channel, um, but I want to know what you guys want to see. Uh, games that my computer can handle recording would be um, Minecraft, modded or vanilla, um, I don't know about Euro Truck Simulator, I think that I would be able to handle it, but, uh, I'm not positive. Um. I do have Farming Simulator 2013. Yeehaw. Uh, if you guys would want to see that. Um. I don't know. Give me some suggestions. Uh. Or if you guys just want me to add more FSX series. You know, I'm... That's actually what I'm leaning towards, is uh, adding more, like, separate FSX series instead of, like, an entirely new game, because, you know, that's kind of what my channel is centered around, is FSX. I mean, the name, A Shadowbox, is FSX. Um, I do have another channel uh, that's just A Shadowbox. Um, I haven't uploaded anything to that for probably two and a half years now, though. I used to do Minecraft commentary over there, but, uh, not anymore, and that was back when I still had, um, a less than decent laptop, let's say. Right now, I've, uh, got a custom-built desktop, so it's pretty, it's decent, um, though, uh, I suspect that part of my, uh, performance troubles while, oh, I'm under 10,000 feet, keep it under 250, though I suspect that a majority of my performance problems while recording come from the fact that uh, I just have a dual core processor instead of a quad core. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I'm thinking about adding more series to the aircraft, or not to the aircraft, to the channel, leaning towards more FSX content. Um, it wouldn't detract from air hauler. Uh, let me know what you guys want to see. Do you want me to add more games to the channel or add more FSX series to the channel? And uh, if you want to add, if you want me to add more games to the channel, let me know what you want to see. Um, so yeah, I mean FSX will more than likely it will always be the uh, primary game. I guess, for uh, this channel. But I, I would be willing to play something else if you guys want to see it. Alright, within 50 miles, there's the airport right there. We're going to be landing at runway 4. So, that'll be right there. Almost exactly perpendicular High to us speed. right now. Oh. High speed. No auto th no auto throttle. So uh good thing about this though, you know, uh, having to cut the throttle is our fuel burn goes way down. <laughs> We're just getting over two hundred gallons per hour now. Actually we're probably getting three hundred. Northern Wisconsin, huh?
Even default FSX scenery, this looks fairly pretty. Um, I wouldn't go as far to say beautiful. <laughs> But it looks really good. Oh, make up your mind, ATC. You're gonna make me break some packages. I must have just been like a tenth of a mile too far to the right. At least there's at least there's no flies in the cockpit today. That'd be really irritating. I'm trying to land and keep on getting distracted. I'm hoping they're gonna tell me to uh descend further relatively soon. Let's get our speed back up. I've let it fall too much. As a result, we have uh, too much too much uh, nose out pitch. It almost looks like we're flying in a flare. Well, not that drastic. Let's see a flyby. <laughs> Okay, maybe that was a little drastic nose-up pitch there. But, uh, come on. It's hard, because I have to keep it under 250, but uh, then the nose just shoots up in order to uh, maintain altitude. No, runway... No, they couldn't... They didn't actually mean runway 04, did they? Visual runway 4 approach. That means 40, right? They wouldn't... Yeah. They... If it was... If it was actually 04, that would be... Oh, you know what? That's probably it. Even though FSX gave no ILS frequency for it, maybe our aircraft will pick it up. That would be nice. Really hope that's the case. <laughs> I swear, managing throttles in straight and level flight is the bane of my existence, though. No, I really do love this aircraft, though. Um, and I'm looking forward... I'm already looking forward to the next aircraft, though. Um, 
I think our next aircraft is either going to be an ERJ-175 or 195. Uh, again, designed by Field Air, published by Wilco. I think they're a fantastic company. I have uh, three of their products. I have uh, their Airbus Volume 1. Uh, so that's the A318, A319, A320, and A321. Uh, I've got their E-Jets V2, which is the uh, 175 and 195. Oh, whoops. And I also have their, uh, obviously, their regional jets, the 135 and 145. I think they're a fantastic company, one of the best, and one of the most underrated in my opinion. You know, that I'm not saying that they compete with like PMDG, you know, but uh, definitely better than, let's say, Perfect Flight. Perfect Flight just makes me laugh, I'm sorry, but they do. I had their uh, Boeing 7, 717. Oh, that was a disaster. I mean, worse than freeware. That's how bad it was. It was worse than freeware. Maybe I'll show you guys sometime. Oops, I must have accidentally right clicked there. We got like minus 16. Not minus 21. Ooh. Okay, they're still 31 miles out, so it's probably acceptable that I don't see the airport yet. Whoops, wrong way. Oh man, I am nervous for this landing. I can tell you right now, I'm not going to be doing much talking when it's uh, actually time for the final approach. Oh man. <laughs> this is a short, short runway. Probably shouldn't even be landing on it. It's uh, just under 4,000 feet. It's like 3,945 or something like that. Man. Air hauler thinks we can land on it though, so uh, we're going to give it a shot. Infinite Lives, uh, you might be about to get some retribution uh, for me poking a little fun at your uh, blown tires and stuff because uh, I might not have an aircraft after this. Shut up! <laughs> so yeah. Oh man. I, I'm terrified. My blood's already pumping.
I'm so nervous I, I'm forgetting my flows for the approach checklist. I think it's approach just checklist. APU. Altimeters. Set. Pressurization. Checked. APU. On. Fasten seatbelts. No smoking. On. End of checklist. It should be noted that how I'm using the FMC or FMS right now is not the uh, technical proper way to use it. Um, normally you would program a SID and a STAR in there and you would fly those. Uh, SID is a standard instrument departure, I believe, and a STAR is a standard arrival, I believe. <laughs> um, but FSX ATC doesn't handle that very well. Well, at all, really. And, uh... If we do that, we might mess them up and they might crash us into uh, some traffic. So while we have traffic enabled, we'll follow uh, FSX ATC and modify our use as the FMS. Of the FMS. That's the airport. I think we're in trouble. <laughs> oh, yep. I see the runway right there. Come on, let me talk. He's going to yell at me. I don't like being yelled at. There's the runway. Autopilot. Autopilot. Okay. Cut speed. Start deploying flaps. Man, they put us way too close. I know I'm too fast to be deploying these things. Frame rates are dying. Oh god. Oh god. Pause. Um, I am getting. Wow. Wow, that was quite a lag spike. I think that's my hard drive saying, "What are you doing?" Oh, but looks like looks like they're back up to normal. Twenty-five. Um. All right. Let's let's continue the attempt. Oh man. Oh, and they died again. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. This isn't good. Oh no. Oh, oh man, I don't understand why I'm getting such bad lag. I don't understand it. I mean, oh my gosh, I'm getting such bad lag. I don't want to cut the video. I want you guys to see this approach. Oh, this is going to be like an approach to remember. Oh, lag, lag okay, we're doing okay, doing okay, what's, what are my flaps at, they're at 9, there's 18, there's not even any poppy lights, are you kidding, oh man, Oh man, guys, I don't know. Oh, I really don't know. Oh, come on, more thrust. 
do more thrust. Oh man, I'm so scared. I am so scared. Why would you give me this runway? Why? This looks like a grass runway. You have got to be kidding me. Why on earth would you give an ERJ a freaking grass runway? Especially when a paved option is available. This is not okay. Approaching minimums. What? Forget you, air traffic control. We're going around. Landing here. Ah. Oh. That, kids, is why you should never use FSX default ATC. Gear up. It was already going to be a struggle to land on their 3,000 foot run or 4,000 foot runway, let alone a freaking grass strip. Ah. Oh. Forget that. There was just no way. There was literally no way. Alright guys, well... In order to save my hard drive, I'm going to cut the video here and I'll come back when uh, we're getting ready for approach. Autopilot. Hey guys, I'm back. Um, we've told uh, the uh, ATC exactly where they could go. And... Um, now we're just kind of winging it, so to speak. Uh, I might have to confess to a little bit of a pun intended there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. We're trying to get them at bearing 280. Two eight zero is the real runway. Oh, I'm probably going to fail on this so hard. This is the the biggest plane I've flown in a long time. Oh. There's the runway. I see it. We might live. We might just live. Oh gosh. Landing here. Landing Thank you. Here. Landing here. Landing here. Landing here. Yes. Landing gear. Landing here. Landing You've here. made your point. Thank you. Oh. Oh man. And the stress is coming back. All right, let's do this. Ugh. Setting down an ERJ-145 on a small regional 4,000 foot strip. Okay, no more talking. No more talking, just focus. Too fast for this Sink runway. Rate. Sink rate. Too fast for this runway. Much, much, much too fast for this runway. Sink rate. Sink rate. Oh. Ooh. Took a little bit of damage there. Go ahead, infinite lives. Laugh it up. You earned the right. You of all people have earned the right. <laughs> oh. But we did it without completely dying. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, 
We have arrived at our Whoa, I do have a flight attendant. Ha ha, Dr. Vesuvius. Thank you for flying with us. We hope to see you again soon. I don't know how you got on the plane, lady, but there's going to be police waiting for you. You're going to have some splaining to do. Whew. I'm just glad we're alive and a convenient parking place. Whew. Oh, man. Well, well, that was stressful. I don't even do anything in the right order because the adrenaline's still going. Yeah, yeah, the landing was quite positive. Probably took like 20% damage. At this point, I don't even care. <laughs> oh man, I'm just happy to be on the ground and more or less in one piece. Oh, come on, turn off already. I turned off. No, I didn't. I always do that. I turn off the bus ties and not the battery. Oh, unit, okay. No, the RO unit is definitely not okay because I just shut it down. Okay. Well, oh, I forgot to pull in the flaps. Ah, they'll be fine. Okay, so. Until next. <laughs> wow, I can't even. All right, guys. Until next time, I'm a Shadowbox. This has been a completely ridiculous air hauler flight. I really hope you enjoyed. Uh, please don't hate me too much. I know I did a lot of things wrong this episode, but this is the eighth time. I'm not gonna do it again. Okay. Already did the already did the sign off. Uh, I'm a Shadowbox. This is Air Hauler. Hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned. Have a good one.